Hey, Brittany, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. So I am excited to have you join me for uh, another one of these recordings I'm doing with you amazing women who have been featured in my new book, which actually comes out today called Clever Girl Finance. Hey. <laughs> and so in the book uh, and on the website, actually, you had talked about um, your net worth and how you were pursuing growing your net worth. And I remember when you were first featured on Clever Girl Finance, it was your goal to get to a $250,000 net worth. Net worth, um, paying off debt and just focusing on building wealth. And so in the book, you talk about that and why that's your focus. So I wanted to keep, catch up with you <laughs> and see how you're doing with that. But before we start talking, tell everyone who you are and what you do. Yeah. So I am now Brittany Settle. I was Brittany Canise when I, um, did all the interviews for you, but I, uh, used to be a personal finance blogger and I have since moved to help female entrepreneurs with their money. Um, but I am a certified CPA. I uh, work for a company in the financial realm. So I am surrounded by numbers. I feel like all day, every day, <laughs> so, whether it's personal finance, business finance, I'm in there, I'm doing it and I love it. So um, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. I live in Indiana, uh, Indianapolis. Love it here with my husband. We just got married this past year. Congratulations. Thank you. So, so life is good. Mm -hmm. So what made you, um, you know, way back when you were featured on Clever Girl Finance, what made you decide that you wanted to start focusing on increasing your net worth? What was the pivotal moment that, that you were like, wait a minute. Okay. I'm tired of being in debt. Um, and I don't just want to pay off my debt, but I want to have a positive net worth at the time, which was at the time, what you had set for yourself was $250,000. So yes. what was it? So I am just a natural competitor. I like to say, <laughs> so I like to set goals for myself. So the 250 at the time was kind of just, um, something I had, I had said, I just kind of threw the dart at that point. Like that was, that was going to be my next goal. And the reason I focused on net worth is I think a lot of people are really focused on increasing their income, but what they don't understand is that if you don't also focus on the other side of that equation, which is your expenses, you could yeah. be earning hundreds of thousands of dollars and moving the needle none whatsoever. So to me, net worth really was the focus because net worth was what was going to get me to be financially free. Um, income definitely helps. A higher income definitely can help you pursue that uh, if you're also controlling your expenses because then you're widening that gap. Um, mm -hmm. But that's why I really wanted to focus on the net worth piece because to me, that was where my financial freedom was going to come from. And I didn't want to necessarily have to work forever. I do like to work. I like what I'm doing, but I feel like there are going to be uh, times in my life. Maybe I have to scale back or you never know what's going to happen. And I just wanted to have that flexibility to be able to kind of step back if I needed to. And I knew having that higher net worth was going to do that. Yeah, and it's important to, like you said, flexibility, but, you know, it's really options, right? You want to be able to have options to choose yeah. to do something or change without without you um, experiencing a devastating impact to your finances because you don't have any money, um, you don't have any backup to help you support yourself going through that transition. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really important, especially, you know, for us as women, a lot of us are sole household earners or breadwinners. We make more money than our spouses or, you know, right. single moms or, you know, just single in general, you know, mm -hmm. and so net worth, having our net worth at the forefront of what we're pursuing with our finances is really, really important. Um, so it's been a while since we did that um, <laughs> interview. <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> and you started your own business, right? And so are you still on track to the 250? Have you exceeded it? Um, and also, how have you found that, you know, transitioning from being a full-time employee to now running your business full-time is helping you um, make progress with building this net worth goal that you have for yourself? Right. So, yes, I did hit the 250. That was, I know, that was actually, I think, 
God, it's been a while. I don't know if it's been yeah. like a year, year and a half, but I did hit the 250. It's been so long in the past, you know. Um, <laughs> now we are, so I think we are about at the 325 to 350 range. Um, part of that is due to the fact my husband and I started investing in real estate. Um, but it also got countered by the fact, uh, a, a lot of people may be going through the same thing. I luckily was student debt free when I got out of college, but my husband was not. And my husband also got his master's. So when we got married, I inherited a lot of debt from him, um, so now, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. Um, you know, that's, that's part of what came with the package and I was a okay with that. Um, but now we're working to kind of pay that off. And at the same time, we're investing in real estate and using that as a means to pay it off. And um, so there's a lot of different factors coming into play, but we are still moving the needle. And um, I'm trying to think what the other portion of your question was. So how has having, how has having your business? Yes. Yes. So it's been wonderful. So I'm not fully full-time in my business. It's still a side. I still have a full-time job, but that one, um, I actually switched positions. I now work strictly from home. Um, so I have a lot more flexibility with what I'm doing. So I'm able to do a little bit more with the real estate and with my side business, helping female entrepreneurs and just having that side business. It, there's so much extra cash being generated and it's not, it hasn't replaced my full-time salary yet by any means, but every little bit helps. And, um, we use that money to save, to help pay off debt. Uh, we want to eventually buy another home for ourselves. There's different goals we have. So having that side hustle per se really yeah. helps us um, get ahead because it's just extra money on top of what I'm making full time um, to help us get to the goals. So we really use my full time income um, to pay off our expenses and our bills and all that. And then we use what my husband makes and what I'm making in the side business uh, to really put towards savings and those types of things. So I have a couple questions for you um, mm -hmm. before we, we end. And one of them was, you know, for someone who's watching, they're probably thinking, well, you know, it was really easy for her because she said she didn't have any student loans. So she was basically starting building her net worth from zero or from mm -hmm. like, you know, some number. And so were you paying off any, did you have any debt to pay off um, while you were working on, you know, pursuing that initial $250,000 number? Mm -hmm. I honestly didn't. I had my mortgage. Uh, that. <laughs> that. I didn't have like the car debt, the student loan yet debt, but I have my mortgage and I'm going to tell you, I'm not paying it off early because the interest rate is so low. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that's a personal decision. Other people like to pursue that. And that is definitely a very valid option. Uh, I think you kind of have to do what's best for you. Um, yeah. So yes, I had that. And now um, with my husband, I definitely have debt, but the thing is we're still making progress towards it. And I think, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people get in the comparison game and they think it's that they're behind and, oh, they have all this debt so that, um, they can never get ahead. Well, I'm, I'm telling you the amount of money that I, I saved over the years and implemented, if I had a ton of debt, it would already be gone and mm -hmm. I'd still be doing a lot of this stuff just because I was that dedicated to um, increasing my net worth and taking care of my finances. So I think if, if you are really set on changing your life and getting financially free and having that independence, you can do it. Yes, sometimes it's not fair and you're not going to be as far ahead as some other people, yeah. but you have Everybody's to look at your own path. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. you, you all have your own path and, and you can do it. You just have to figure out your plan and, and mm -hmm. get after it. And for, you know, folks who are watching this, just to give you a clarification of net worth, it is essentially your assets minus your liabilities. And despite the liabilities that you have with your, when you were single, your mortgage, you still were able to get to that 250K net worth. Mm -hmm. And now even adding on additional liabilities like your husband's right. <laughs> and debt, <laughs> um, you're still able to grow 
your assets to that, you know, you guys are working towards that 325 mark, which is amazing. And that just means that despite the debt that you guys are paying down still, you are actually making progress paying that down on top of that generating extra cash to add to your savings to help you into your net worth uh, further. <laughs> So for me, my last question for you was really around um, just, you know, your relationship. Um, I get asked this all the time of women who have made big accomplishments with their finances. They've paid off tons of debt or they're working towards it. They've adjusted their mindsets. They're saving a lot of money. And then they get into a relationship with an amazing person and they get married. And this person has more debt. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. sometimes, you know, the women I talk to feel defeated because like, well, you know, I was making all this progress and now I have to talk to somebody else about their finances and like, or sit down and plan on another series of debt payments. So how have you guys made that in your relationship, gone on the same page, pursuing financial freedom, increasing your, you made it work for you so that other people who are watching this can kind of like glean from your experience? Yeah. I'll first address just, um, I think sometimes you can look at it as you've made all this progress and it seems to be a setback, but in my mind, I would gladly take my husband if he had twice that amount of debt. Like that's, that's what you really have to look at. And once we got married, we were in it together. We feel we are this family unit, so we are tackling everything together. So we sit down, we have, um, regular communications about what are our goals and what do we really want and what's important to us and what are our values. So we're on the same page with that. And then it's okay, what's our plan for tackling it? So now we're going through as we're as we're spending and our month to month, it's okay, is what we're spending our money on really focused on what our goals are. So I think just having that open communication and it is rough at the beginning because in my situation, my husband felt really responsible for that and he wanted to take care of it himself. Um, and you have to get over that hump, which is sometimes hard because it's really just like a mental thing for them. And I totally understand because I feel like I would have been the same way. Um, but you really are a unit at that point and you just have to work it out and, and tackle it together. And Number one thing is just open communication. I think that's with any aspect of marriage. It's just yeah. open communication. So you have to have that discussion and just recheck in every once in a while. That's awesome. Yeah, open communications, you know, it's all about getting on the same page and not making it a battle or, right. a, you know, like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> some I mean, thing, but understanding it's a long-term journey that you guys are in together. Mm -hmm. And you can't sit there and and just sit in this funk of well now I have to pay off all this debt again or remain yeah. for the first time I mean it is what it is so you just accept it and create a plan and work through it together and you know just to add on to what you said I think in relationships it's you know when you're getting to a relationship everybody comes with their own unique set of circumstances right mm -hmm. um a lot of people didn't just get debt because oh you know oh my god there's debt I feel like having it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's different reasons why people take on debt, education, you know, like mm -hmm. all kinds of things. And that is perfectly fine. For me, what's most important in a relationship is the mindset of that person I'm getting married to or thinking about, you know, being in a long term relationship with. Because if your head is not right, if your head is not in the game to stay motivated and focused to be able to deal with this debt and get us to our, you know, goals as a team, then that is in itself a huge problem and it has nothing to do with the debt because if you're motivated and you're focused and you're ready to put your heart to it doesn't matter how big your debt is you're going to work towards it and find a way to get through it no matter how long it takes but if you're not motivated you're just like woe is me we're meant to have debt and you know your partner is not motivated and you on the other hand are like focused then you're going to start to face conflict there so when you know for those of you watching when you are you know assessing your relationship it's less about the finances, even though that matters, but more about the, the mind and the heart of the person who you're getting into the situation with, because that's going to make all the difference into how they approach the financial aspect of your relationship. Right. 100%. I totally agree. So Brittany, this is awesome. I can't believe your book didn't arrive. So I'm going to send you one. You should have one. You are on page 149. <laughs> Woo! 
Boom! Yes, there we go. And you're talking about net worth. And like I mentioned, the book is out today. So I'll put one in the mail for you today, Brittany. And I'm so glad that we were able to chat and you were able to share your experience in the book. And I'd love for you to tell everyone how they can keep up with you if they have questions, especially since you are a CPA and a lot of our clever girls are business owners. <laughs> yes. So you can find me. I mainly hang out on Instagram. Um, it's at Brit and the B. So that's B R I T T and the B. You can find me there or you can email me at uh, Brit and the Benjamins at gmail.com. And I'll put the links in the show notes uh, for the YouTube channel, the IG TV video, and also for the podcast. So thank you so much, Brittany. You are welcome. It was so great to chat.